Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to day 10 of our 21 days. That means we're halfway through. Hey listen, I wanted to introduce you to today's video. Uh, Sarah Rice is going to be talking about trust. And she's been going through a, a major phase in her life where she's rebuilding a sense of trust in God and His Word. I think you'll be blessed by what she has to say. Hi, LCC Church family. My name is Sarah Rice. Um, this 21 Days of Prayer, I think I um, need to talk about trust. Um, something that I've sort of, the season I've been going through has been dealing with trust and fear and um, overthinking and anxiety and worry and kind of walking this path with the Lord and going through it. And it's funny because, you know, your brain will say, great, I think I learned this lesson. Awesome. We can move on. And then something comes along and it just knocks you for a loop and you realize, nope, didn't really learn the lesson yet because we're still, we're still walking through it. Sometimes seasons can feel like they go on a long time. Um, weeks, months, years. And, um, we, we get frustrated and we get worried and we don't know why it's still going on and, and, you know. I recently read a book called Hind's Feet on High Places. Um, I, on, I don't know the author's name of this one off the top of my head. I believe her first name is Hannah. She wrote it during the very beginning of the 1900s. So it's basically like a Pilgrim's Progress. The main character's name is Much Afraid. She is, it's her journey sort of walking with the Great Shepherd um, to learn essentially how to um, to learn how to serve him on this side of things. So it doesn't end with her going to heaven. Um, it ends with her recognizing who she is in Christ, um, being made being made able to feel joy and peace, essentially, to, I believe her name at the end changes to grace and glory, where she recognizes who she is. She's, she's given up a lot of herself. She's submitted herself to God. And, and through that submission, um, through the learning process, through through the testing that she's gone through, she's, she's recognized that a lot of the things that she thought of herself um, were part of her fallen nature, part of um, the lies that she had believed that were at one point true about her, but then in becoming um, a child of God, you know, it changed some of the nature of, of who she was. And there's a part where she's reminded, um, she sees a very, it's, I think it's a, she sees a very determined face on the good, uh, determined look on the good shepherd's face. And she's reminded of something that one of the servant of the good shepherd had told her earlier on. And the comment was uh, basically love is beautiful, but love is also terrible. And that seems like such a strange phrase, but it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Um, terrible because it, it, it says something like um, it wants to, it intends to remove any blemish or blot from the beloved. Um, when we try to change people, we often get it wrong, right? Because we're not God. We misunderstand. We try to make someone not in God's image, but in or Jesus' image, but in our own image. And we struggle and fail with that because that doesn't really need to work. That does, that's not how that works. But then you think about there are verses in the Bible that do talk about... Um, you know, God says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to bring you hope and a future. Um, and the New Testament talks about um, basically the, the good that's begun in you will be carried on to completion. The work that's begun in you. So the, the changing that's begun in you will be carried on. And C.S. Lewis actually talks about that a little bit as well. Um, one of my morning recent morning devotions kind of talked about that, where he he talks about if you become a child of the Lord, he's not going to leave you as you are. You are going to be changed. He will change you. Um, and I think that's part of the evidence of the fruit of the spirit in us too. Um, that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, gentleness, and self-control. You can attempt to, to do any of those things on your own and it's going to fail. He does all of it. 
we submit ourselves. We recognize when we are trying to, to be in control. We recognize when we are trying to hold on to our own, you know, opinions and emotions that are ours. And are they right though? And so I think it comes down to trust. There's a verse in uh, Romans 15, where it basically says, uh, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that hope may overflow in you by the power of the Holy Spirit. That entire phrase, joy, peace, and hope are included. The one thing that we do in that whole thing is trust. Well, then we ask the question, well, what if I struggle with trust? What if that's what if I, 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 I can't let go of this thing? Tell him. I mean, that's, that's something that may give you anxiety. And if it gives you anxiety, okay, you recognize that something in you is being anxious about something. Tell him about it. Trust him with it. Uh, he says, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving. So thank him. Praise him. With thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will fill your hearts and your minds by in Christ Jesus. We're basically told to trust. And then it says, uh, in the Old Testament as well, it says, trust the Lord your God with all your heart. Be not on your own understanding. Your mind is going to try to get you to doubt that you can trust him. I would also remind you that we are told in 1 Peter and various other places, First Peter, be sober, be on the alert. This is First Peter 5, 8, 11. Be sober, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring, roaring lion, looking for anyone he can devour. So we live in a fallen world. We ourselves have a sinful nature in us because of where we were born. And we have an adversary who's prowling around looking for whom he can devour. But then we're told... Resist him, the devil, our adversary, firm in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are being experienced by your brothers in the world. And then it says, and I love this part, now the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, he called you, right? He called you. He did that part of the job. That part of much of the job is his, you know, we are literally told to trust that he's got us who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will personally, God, the eternal one, before, now, and after, all, God, will personally restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered a little. To him be dominion forever. Amen. I would say that if you are freaking out about some aspect of your walk with Christ, or if you are worried that you're not doing the right thing, or if you're worried about listening to the wrong thing and believing the wrong thing, or if you're worried, if you're worried about all of that, turn around and praise him because he surely is walking with you through something and tell him you trust him. And if you have trouble trusting him, ask him to help you trust him. I am reminded of the verse in the New Testament where it says Jesus is going to help this guy. His, his child is, is sick or there's a problem with the child. And the big thing in that story that stands out to me is the thing that happened where faith was concerned. Belief. The man said to Jesus, if you can help him, the son. You can help the son. Jesus says, if I can. And the man says, I believe. Help my unbelief. He makes a statement and then he asks for help to make the statement truer, stronger. If you are feeling beaten down, attacked, um, like you just can't stand up under what you're dealing with, the anxiety, the worry, the fear, whatever the whatever it is, tell him and then ask for help and strength. And I know for some people it may not it may not be the encouragement that it, it is for me at this point. But I have reminded myself through much of this particular season of my life, and I feel like it's a big part of this, 
is we are working towards something. He and I. He is, he is removing things from me. He is adding things to me. He is pointing out my weaknesses to me so that I can see his strength come into me. He is teaching me how to pray when the thing that I need seems so very basic, simple. Trust. Faith. Peace. You know, those, those types of things that you just... If you've, ever, if you've lived with them for a long time, if you've had them in your life, those just are normal. Those are things that you just naturally go for. And then all of a sudden you kind of get shaken up on it and you're like, oh my goodness. He is your bedrock. He is not going away. He is teaching you something, perhaps, about yourself and about him. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to bring you hope and a future. And that's a really lovely verse. But there's also, I think, again, a level of determination in it. He knows the plans he has for you, declares the Lord. He knows the plans he has. And then we're told, you know, in the New Testament, he who has begun a good work in you will carry it on until the day of completion. He knows and he's carrying. And there's a part of us that should feel, I mean, there's a part of us that naturally feels kind of like, oh goodness. But there's a part of us that should also feel incredibly relieved because that means it doesn't rely on us to be perfect. He is making us what he wants us to be. We are walking through struggles for a reason. And it isn't because he is cruel. Far from it. He is love. But like it was like I, was, like I said earlier with, the, with what I read that book, the, the, the idea of love is beautiful and love is also terrible. Because its determination is to make us exactly what is best for us. And he knows what is best for us. And that is his determination. So I will leave with a verse. I'll kind of leave you with a verse from James um, that I've kind of had floating in my mind for months now. Um, and it says, consider it pure joys. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds. Because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And then I believe it says, but if you lack wisdom, you should ask him, God, who gives freely without finding fault. And then it says, but you should do so without doubting. So if you are getting to that point where you're like, yes, I can ask God for wisdom. I can ask him for understanding. I can ask him, but I'm struggling with doubt. Then tell him. <laughs> if, if you're struggling with it, then let him know. Don't, it says don't doubt. Okay, well, I need wisdom. I need help struggling through getting through this particular era, this particular situation that I'm dealing with. And I'm struggling with doubt. What do I do? Tell him you're doubting. Ask him for help. Recognize that he is the Almighty. He holds the stars in the, in the heavens. If he knows all of them by name, if he know you before you were formed, he hears you and he listens. He wants you to ask. He's already ready. And he's going to make sure that the lesson sticks for your benefit, not to make you feel bad, but for your benefit. He knows what we need before we ask. And he wants us to live in joy and peace, experiencing hope, because we are specifically told 
that when we are asked where our hope comes from, we are to tell them that it comes from God. Right? Well, if we're told that, then we should be living in hope. When you consider the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, joy and peace are right up there at the beginning. And we're told in Romans, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. So clearly, joy and peace and hope are quite important in the walk of a believer. And if we are not living in those things, then we should be asking for instruction from him and help from him. To get there. I hope that was an encouragement. Um, I hope that as we come through this time of COVID that we can, we can practice trusting um, in a world that doesn't want to trust anybody or anything. All scripture is God breathed. And the Holy Spirit is given to us to do many things. He lives in us for many reasons. And one of those is to be a teacher. He carries conviction and rebuke to us, I also think, from the Father. Which is fantastic because we are rebuked because we are loved. And a father rebukes his son so that the son can do things the right way and not live the wrong way. We are told not to fear, we are told to trust. So I pray that as we walk forward in this season and we, we, we come out of this particular season that the whole world is sort of going through and whatever season you are individually are walking through right now, trust that he knows best. Trust that he knows you better than you know you. And that he is trustworthy, the only trustworthy one. You are held safely in his hand. We don't have to be afraid. Have a wonderful day. Um, and I hope that God's peace and joy and hope are something that you seek after. And that... His gracious mercy allows us to find. Thank you. Oh, I hope you were encouraged by that. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we ask that today you would help us to be people of trust. You would help us to be people who put you first in our lives, no matter what. People who rely on your word more than our feelings. More, your word more than our opinions. Your word more than what people are telling us. Father, bring us back to you and you alone. Bring us back to you completely. We love you. We reach out to you today, and we ask that you would lead us and guide us. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hang on tight to him today. He is the one that we can trust above all else. God bless you.